All right, folks. Um, finishing up geometric sequences here. Uh, on on Friday, we said that every geometric sequence can be recur or written as an explicit formula as a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, where a sub 1 is your first term, r is your ratio, your common ratio from, from two consecutive terms, okay? You can also then uh, write it as an, a recursive definition being um, a sub n minus 1 times r, okay? So the next term is found by taking the previous term and multiplying it by that r, okay? That one there, I think, is the one that is easiest to use to actually develop a sequence given the first term and given what r is. And the explicit form is the best for answering questions like this, when it says, here is the sequence already developed. Can you come up with the next term or uh, the fifth term or tenth term or something like that? Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Or they give you parts. Like example two down here, they're going to give you parts of the sequence. Um, the explicit form is going to be best applied there. Okay. So let's just look at this sequence here. They want us to find the tenth term. So what we could do, if we had the time, but this this is all, this is a, I think this is a great, exercise to show the purpose of mathematics because you can take the time to say okay first term is four seconds 12 third 36 okay so what am i doing from this term to get that one what's that ratio multiply by three multiply by three again right so then i can say well 36 times three okay so 36 times three 108 Okay, then I can take 108 times 3, and I get 324. And I get 324 times 3, and it's going to give me, what, 975, uh, 72? Okay, and I can take 972 times 3. I keep doing that until I get to the 10th spot, right? Is that going to be time-consuming? Yeah. Where if I know, because this is the work I've already done, I've already, I already know the R is 3. If I want the 10th term... So a sub 10, I start with the first term, which is 4. And then I'll multiply that by r, which was 3. And we'll now raise that to the n minus 1. Well, n minus 1 would be 9 in this case. So now I'm assuming that we don't maybe know what 3 times 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 3, times three, times three is. So we use your calculator. So 3 to the ninth is 1, 000, or sorry, 19,683. So we have 4 times this. So we'll multiply those together. It gives me 78,732. And that's the tenth term in that sequence, okay? which is more efficient then saying, okay, I'm going to take 972 times 3. And I'll take that number times 3. And I'll take that number times 3. Okay? Um, but think about what is really happening. See why this is, why that sequence would work. Why this explicit sequence right there works. This would be 4. Would you agree that this is? So 12 is 4 times 3 then, right? 36 would be 4 times 3 times 3. 108 would be 4 times 3 times 3 times 3. 324 would be 4 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, right? Well, this is 4 times 3 to the 0. This would be 4 times 3 to the 1st. This is 4 times 3 to the 2nd. This is 4 times 3 to the 3rd. This is 4 times 3 to the 4th. If this is position, um, do it in different color. If this is n equals one, this is n equals two, this is n equals three, n equals four, n equals five. How does this exponent right there relate 
to that end. How do they relate to each other? How does that zero relate to that one? How does that one relate to that two? How does that two relate to that three? That three to that four, that four to that five. It's always what? It's always one. This one's always one higher, right? So then the, the rule down here is that it's always one less than the position. So if I'm out to the position 10, then the exponent better be nine, right? Does that kind of make sense? And that's how we structure, that's how we get that a sub one times r to the n minus one rule is by looking at that pattern, okay? Um, is it okay? So that's how, you, that's how you do that type of problem when they ask you to um, predict what a 10th, 12th, 30th, whatever term is, okay? Now, eventually, just because of multiplication, values get so much bigger, so much faster than addition, if it's a geometric sequence and they ask me to find like the 1,000th term, okay, my calculator is probably going to not know how to do that. So if I want to find the 1,000th term, we would just write it as 4 times 3 to that. Because my calculator is probably going to say overflow. Basically meaning that the result of that is too big for my calculator to calculate. Okay. Um, something like Desmos or GeoGebra will be more powerful and will probably be able to do that. Um, but that's just a, a constraint that we have based on our uh, technology. Uh, and there are, there are branches, it's called number theory, there are branches of mathematics that allow us to find that number much quicker than using technology. So 3 to the 999th power, we can use... Um, number theory to help out with that, which would be a math class you take way down the line. Uh, okay, so this next one. So let's find the second and third terms of a geometric sequence, okay? What do I need for every geometric, uh, geometric sequence? I need a sub n, that's what I'm looking for. I need the first term, do I have the first term in the sequence? I've got it. And I need r, do I have R? No, I don't know what they're multiplying because I'm missing the next term, right? So I can't take I can't take this term and divide it by two to get R. I can't take this term divide by that to get R, and I can't take fifty four divided by that to get R. Okay? So kind of at an impasse here on what to do. But we do have some information. We know that A sub one is Two. That's provided, correct? Okay. And we know a sub 4 is negative 54. So what we can do is create this idea that a sub, if a sub 4 is 54, so I'm just going to say a sub 4 right now equals, says a1. Do I know what a1 is? It was 2 times r raised to the n minus 1. Well, on the fourth term, what's n minus 1? Isn't it 3? Does that make sense? Okay. So this 4 right here is the n value. So I got that. But don't I know that a sub 4 is negative 54? So I'm going to replace that now with negative 54. Do you now have a formula using the first term and the fourth term in this case? Do you now have a formula to solve for R? What would you do to solve for R here? Divide by 2. So it gives me negative 27 is equal to R cubed. Now what would you do? I take the cube root. So take the cube root there. Take the cube root there. So that would give me r. One number when I multiply it by itself three times gives me negative 27. One number multiplied by itself three times will give me 27.
When you say multiply two numbers to get 27, what numbers do you think off the top of your head? Nine times three, right? Well, how many times do I take three and multiply to get nine? Twice, right? So to get 27, it'd be three times three times three, isn't it? Okay. So the cube root of negative 27 is negative three. So the R value, the common ratio that they're using here to get to negative 54 from 2 is to multiply by negative 3. So if I take 2 times negative 3, what do you get? Two times negative three give me negative six, right? And now what do I get if I take negative six times my R value of negative three again? What's negative six times negative three? Eighteen. What's eighteen times negative fifty four? Or sorry, let me rephrase it. What's eighteen times negative three? It gives a negative fifty four, right? Okay. So once we find R, we can go ahead and find those two missing terms then. Does that make sense? When your R value, because the sequence is geometric, so we're multiplying, right? When my R value is negative, what's going to happen is that your sequence is going to bounce back and forth between a positive number and a negative number. Okay? Um, Let me show you something that we like to do eventually. So we just found that the first term was at a height of 2. The second term, we said it was down at negative 6. The third term was at 18. The fourth term was at negative 52, okay? What we can do here uh, let me, it's negative 54, thank you. We can take What we end up doing a lot of times is taking those points and connecting them with a curve, and we try to analyze what that curve is, okay? Um, sometimes we will see if I can do it this way. Let's create a segment between there and there, and then there and there, and then there and there. And you can see kind of a pattern. Let's make the y-axis do this. You can kind of see a pattern of going down and then up and then down and then you're going to go up even higher here. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so if I take at 5, we take negative 54 times negative 3 and we plot that point. And then at 6, we'll take 162 times negative 3 and we'll plot that point. So I can take segments and connect this one to that one and that one to that one. And you can see then that behavior oh wrong way so you get that kind of pattern right does that kind of make sense so then what we ask ourselves is okay well what happens if i start adding these things together so we've got this number two and then um negative 6, and then positive 18, and then um, negative 54. If I start adding those values together, 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54, 162, negative 486, we're interested in, well, what do they sum to later on? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and that's what the next couple sections will be, is say, okay, take these commas out, take these commas out of these sequences, and put plus signs in them, and we get what we call a series. And we'll be asked, okay, if this is the case, if, if um, maybe one week, maybe I'm in the stock market and I make $2, and the next week I lose 6 and the next week I make 18 
and the next week I lose 54, and the next week I make 162, okay? Where am I going to be maybe at the end of a year? Where am I going to be? What, what's my net gain or loss? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so those are series that we talk about, and that's where this is going to go and lead us into uh, in the next couple of days. Um, all right, so you remember when we talked about arithmetic means, uh, if, we, if I gave you two terms that you did not know the term in between them, okay, then in an arithmetic sequence, that middle term is the average of the two terms that kind of bookend uh, that unknown value, okay? With a ratio, with a geometric um, sequence, the same thing can be done, but we use what we call a geometric mean instead of arithmetic mean. Whenever you see the word geometric, they're referring to like the, the multiplication concept, okay? Um, so it says geometric mean, by definition, is the square root of the product of two numbers, x and y, okay? So here, two numbers, x and y, if I multiply them together, take the square root, that's what we refer to as the geometric mean, okay? Here it says, if you know two values in a geometric sequence, but you do not know the term between them, there are two points for the missing term, or sorry, two options for the missing term. It is either the geometric mean between the two known, which I call bookend terms. You guys know what bookends are? Yep, there are those things on a shelf that hold the books together, okay? So the bookends are the known values, and this, the books on the inside would be the unknown values. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, or the value is the opposite of the geometric mean, okay? So these, so 48 and 3 are the bookends, and I don't know what that middle term is, but I know that the sequence is geometric. Does that make sense? So the way that I find that number is that it is, the, it is the geometric mean between that number and that number. So I'm going to take 48, multiply it by 3, take the square root, okay? So 48 times 3, is 144. What's the square root of 144? 12. Okay, so when they're saying that it is the square root of 144, or it's the opposite of it. So I don't, I'm not 100% sure, because I don't know what my R is. My R in this situation could now be 4, or it could have been negative 4. Because if I start with 48, multiply by, or sorry, divide by 4, it gets me 12, right? Divide that by 4 again gets me 3, correct? But I could also start at 48 and divide by negative 4 and give me negative 12. Take negative 12, divide by negative 4 again, and it gets me back to 3, right? Because I don't know any more information in this list. I only know those two values that does not tell me then whether this is a positive or negative uh, 12. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we can do the same thing. As long as I have an odd number of missing terms in between two terms, okay, we should be able to do this process. So if I look at those two terms up there, 972 and 12, I want to find the geometric mean between those. So what it's going to do is that what this first process is actually going to find that value for us, okay? It always, this process always finds the middle value, okay, or the middle of the sequence. So if I take the square root of 972 times 12, 972 times 12 gives me 11,664. I hope that's a perfect square. It is. Gives me 108. So this number right here is 108. Okay. Now, once we find that 108, did we just create Another problem like this one up here, does that make sense? Okay, so now I'm going to take those, the 972 and the 108 and multiply them together. So 972 times 108, 
And that gives me the square root of 104,976. So we'll put that under the square root. It gives me 324. So square root of that number is 324. Okay. Then do we have the same thing that can be done there? So now I'll take 108 times 12, put that underneath the square root. It gives me 1296. And the square root of that is 36. Okay. Does anybody want to take – it's it's easier to look right here. What's that common difference or common ratio right there? Take 12, divide – or 12 into 36 how many times? Okay, so – so if I'm multiplying, if I, that it is the list that we, we had earlier, or portion of it. If I'm multiplying, remember the R value here, you divide it by 3. That's the same thing as multiplying by one-third, right? So R is always de determined through division. So if I take 12, I always take the, the next term divided by the previous. If I do that, it gives me one-third. So that's my R value. So if I take 972, multiply it by one-third, I should get 324. Take 324, multiply by one-third, you get 108. 108, multiply by one-third, 36. Okay? So, if they wanted, let's say if they wanted a rule for this, they wanted an explicit rule. Can I rewrite this as A sub N is equal to my first term, 972, times R, which is now one-third, raised to N minus 1. That is my formula now to generate that list in all the other terms that come after it. Your explicit formula for a geometric sequence is always A sub 1, first term, times your common ratio, so in this case it's one third, and that common ratio then always needs to be raised to the N minus 1 exponent. Is that okay? Arithmetic sequences, arithmetic, are always found by taking and adding the same thing to the previous terms, right? Geometric sequence is found by taking every previous term and multiplying it by the same amount then to get the next term. That's the difference between arithmetic and geometric. Is that okay? Can we do some of this stuff on our own? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to publish a math Excel for this section, be 9-3.